Okay, finally post-processing. I can double click on results to open uh, CFD post. Okay, it is open. And uh, you see right now just a wire mesh of my um, geometry. And what would I like to, to visualize with it? Well, under user locations and plots, you can insert uh, a lot of different things. Uh, for us, uh, we're solving for temperatures, right? So maybe a contour plot of how temperature varies. I can choose OK. It's asking for the domain. I can just choose the all the domains, the one that I have. And now it's asking for location. Uh, so I'll choose the sides there. Uh, variable uh, temperature is the thing I'd like to look at. And so I can choose apply. If I want to look directly at the face, I can click on the Z triad there on my coordinate system. And uh, there's a nice contour plot of how my temperature varies across the domain. Remember I said this surface was at uh, 0 Celsius and I had convection to fluid at uh, 25 Celsius. I also had heat generation inside the domain. So you can see these lines or contours of constant temperature as you move from right to left. Um, well, in terms of heat transfer, right, we'd be going from hot to cold, so left to right. Uh, that would be the direction of heat transfer. Uh, let's see, to make this a, a prettier plot, note that the temperature contour is a little rough here in terms of temperatures. Uh, so maybe I can switch this to Celsius, and maybe I'd like to get rid of the scientific notation and make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, first, let's switch to Celsius. I can click on the Variables tab and double-click on Temperature. And instead of units of Kelvin, I can switch to units of Celsius. Okay, that helps a little bit. I can now go back and click on my default legend view. Uh, and there I have some options. Uh, variable and location, show legend units, which is fine where I place it. Under appearance now I have options for notation. I'll go to fixed and maybe zero precision in terms of digits. Oops, that was significant figures. It's so maybe three. There you go. And now you can see I'll go back to three here. Now you can see how the temperature varies uh, across my solid. If I wanted to uh, put this into a report, what I would do is right click and choose Save Picture. I could direct uh, where to save it to, the format, if I want to make the background white, I could do that there. Uh, I could choose the screen size or specify the size directly, scale, uh, all those sorts of things. And then uh, I'd have an image that I could put into a, a report. Something else I might want to do is perform some calculations. Uh, for that, I can go to the Expressions tab, I'm sorry, Calculators tab, and click on the function calculator. So, for example, I said that the uh, top and bottom surfaces were insulated. So I should get zero heat transfer. So I'll do a area integration on the top and I will integrate. Uh, I don't see heat transfer there. I can click on the dot 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 button to bring up my full range of options. And so for instance I can choose heat flux. There I go and I can click Calculate. So the area integral of heat flux on the top surface is 0 watts. So indeed I did have a, an insulated surface there. Uh, what about the left side? Let's look there and calculate. 
And so I see I've got uh, 0 0.04 watts of total uh, heat transfer through that area. Remember, heat transfer goes from high temperature to cold temperature, so that's heat transfer from the, the convection fluid I have out here into the solid. Uh, what if I wanted to figure out the flux? Well, let's see here. I believe that would be area average. There we go. So that's an average of 1,200 watts per meter squared through the, the left surface. Let's check out the right boundary. There we go. And uh, so I see negative 4,400 watts per meter squared. Okay, and that's actually leaving, and so you have the negative sign in front of it. Uh, if you wanted to create more, more detailed calculations, uh, you can always click the Show Equivalent Expression which uh, shows you the text they use, uh, the scheme or the syntax for creating those uh, calculations. Uh, then you can go to the Expressions tab, right click, and uh, create your own. So you can do basic uh, math with these expressions, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, uh, that sort of thing. Another thing you might want to do finally is create plots, uh, maybe export data. Uh, so let's learn how to do that. Uh, let's say, for example, I wanted a plot of temperature as it uh, varied through the, through the solid. So the first thing I need to do is to create a line for which I'm going to plot data. I'll go to User Locations and Plots and insert a line. The method is two points. Um, I want to go somewhere up here. Um, so in terms of x, I'm going to go from 0x to all the way to the right, which I believe was 60 millimeters. For the y-coordinate, uh, my origin was down here, and if I remember correctly, this was about uh, 35 millimeters tall. Uh, so maybe I'll do... 30 millimeters. Note that uh, this bar here shows you the relative position in terms of your domain. And Z, uh, I'll keep as, as 0, 0. For the line type, I'll take uh, maybe 100 samples. Click Apply. And uh, if I turn off my contour plot by unchecking the box there, you can see my line where it is positioned. Okay, so I have that line, and I'd like to plot temperature across that. Well, the next thing you do is go down to Report, right-click, and insert a chart. You can give it a title here and a caption. For the data series, the location is line 1. You could click on the New button here to bring in other lines if you wanted to plot multiple curves on the, the same chart. For x-axis, I'll let that be my x-coordinate. For the y-axis, I'll let that be temperature. Okay, and now you see I've created a chart of x-position versus y-temperature uh, as I go across the uh, domain of the solid at that uh, the line that I created. If I wanted to export that data, uh, say I'm more familiar with using Excel for plots, that sort of thing, you can choose the Export button. Uh, you can choose the location and you can save it as a uh, comma separated ver uh, value file which can be read directly into Microsoft Excel. Uh, so with that, uh, that gives us a, a very basic understanding of how to post-process a conduction heat transfer solution. Uh, in parting, I'll mention one final thing. The nice thing about creating these lines and charts um, is that those are saved in CFD post. So, for instance, if I wanted to go and reduce my mesh size, I could follow that. I can close CFD post. 
I could then double click and go back to mesh. I could reduce my mesh. I could uh, then go back into setup. Uh, nothing would change, so I could open it and uh, accept everything and close it. I could rerun my solution and then go back into results and it would automatically load my new results and create the same plots that I had specified earlier. Uh, it's a nice thing about uh, doing everything in ANSYS Workbench. As usual at this point, you'd probably want to save your work. Um, again, put that on your personal directory. And with that, I hope uh, you enjoy the joys of modeling conduction heat transfer.